Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Guys, and we are back live here in Honolulu, Hawaii, with the Prince of Investment Show. You know, of course, I'm all the way in Denver, Colorado. But today we have a very amazing and great show. Thank you guys for tuning in and catching us live and the people that are catching us back on the playback. But today's topic, as you guys can see in the description box, once again, we have another great, great topic. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about businesses, business consultancy, getting a business line of credit, and all the other great stuff. But as you guys can see in the, uh, the description box, I have a best-selling author, um, business consultant for over 20 years, and he's like myself, close to my heart. He's a veteran as well. You know, done all, spoken all across the world, all those other great things. But also, his best-selling book, you're going to have a chance to win a copy, but you got to stay tuned. But without further ado, let me bring in my guest, Mr. Dr. Watkins. How are you doing today, sir? Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on the program. I'm excited. I can't wait to share. Okay, definitely. You know, we had a lot of technical difficulties today. You know, audio and things has been kind of going crazy in Hawaii, <laughs> but we're going to power straight through it. You know, I uh, definitely sure. uh, uh, apologize about that, but, you know, technology is our friend sometimes, but sometimes it becomes a little difficult. <laughs> but no one problem. of the things for I'm people here. who don't know, okay, so people who don't know, who is Dr. Watkins? Well, I um, I grew up in a little town called Monroe, Michigan, and where we define success as getting a welfare check every month, and that's kind of the way I grew up. And we define success as as getting a double white trailer. You know, every month that three hundred dollar check would come in from the government, and and um, that, that that meant that we could eat and we can have a place to live uh, for thirty days, and then we got a check the next month. And that's kind of where I'm from. But I didn't want to live like that. I didn't want to stay that way. And I started selling used vacuum cleaners and um, actually did pretty good knocking door to door but I did it for so long I ended up having holes in my shoes and I did that for for a couple of years uh, and then I graduated from high school but um, I did not want to stay there and I wrote a book called Never Chase a Paycheck Again and um, it's been uh, a bestseller has been all around the world it's been helping a lot of people but I wrote the book because I didn't want to live my life that way and as a result of that I started a finance company called Conquer Consult and Conquer Worldwide is an umbrella corporation, and now we're on a task to create 20 million jobs by launching 2 million new entrepreneurs in 200 cities throughout the United States. So um, I'm very pleased. We have a great staff. And so, but I came from very humble beginnings, and I still have those shoes with those holes in them. That's a reminder of where I came from, and, um, and that's why I'm here today, to help people get to where they're supposed to be to make sure they have all the resources and relationships relationships they need, because then you know this, Prince, is that a dream without resources is a nightmare. And that's who I am. I'm a guy who is providing many resources to as many people as possible so they can fulfill their dreams. That is awesome. Great story. Now, you, you hit up on something that was crucial. They hit me closely, too. Like I always tell people, my greatest fear is what I don't know. So when you say the word resources, Many people can't say uh, what resources are because they don't even know what's available to them. So being an entrepreneur, on this, at first I want to commend you for your mission and thing that you guys are doing, but creating these entrepreneurs, what resources that they have? Because some people lack ideas, some people lack money, some people lack know-how. What resources do entrepreneurs have at their fingertips? Well, there's always a gap between where you are and where you want to be. But, you know, when you have a dream, sometimes, you know, having a dream uh, can be very frustrating because this dream is abstract, but you're living in the present. And so from the time of where you are, whether you're working a full-time job or perhaps you got two jobs or maybe you're behind on bills, but you keep this dream that you've had for some time, that can be a frustrating place. So we ask people to come in. When they come into our office, the first thing we want to know is, what is the dream? And then there are seven things that we provide them in terms of resources, depending on where they are. And the first thing we want to make sure is that they're 
dream is clear. Make sure that their their the idea is clear. And then secondly, we want to make sure they have a personal financial plan. And then thirdly, we want to make sure they have a business plan. And then thirdly, fourthly, we want to make sure they have a team. We become their team. And then we provide the resources. That means the financial resources. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But we have several programs where we've already done close to $6.8 million just in the last year of lines of credit and loans. And some of that is equity for people to, to start their own restaurants, their own bed and breakfasts, their consulting companies. And last year alone, we launched about 200 real estate investors, brand new real estate investors. And so we're doing this. And so those resources are depending on where they are. So we shore up that gap to make sure they can begin to take baby steps to eventually start walking their own business and then pay it forward with a job for somebody else. Oh, wow. That's a very nice resource. Because one of the big things you always hear about and, and, and uh, entrepreneurs say is, I don't have the money. Where do I get the money? Where do I get the seed money? I would love to start that bed and breakfast. I would love to start that restaurant. And do I qualify for a line of credit? You know, is it is it open for anybody? Some people, is it some things that they would need? What do you have to say to that person? Well, our programs doesn't require collateral. As a matter of fact, we, we provide 0% interest for the first uh, 12 months. As a matter of fact, 90% of our clients end up paying the money back within a year. So it's a great program. So we just assume you don't have any money. But there's one thing you do have to bring. you got to bring something, and that is credit. So although we're providing business lines of credit, you've got to bring some something to the table. you got to bring personal credit. So we like to see a 690. So the 690 just tells us that at least you pay your bills on time, right? But most people, because they went through this recession uh, in 2008, 2012, a lot of bankruptcies out there, a lot of foreclosures out there. So we've been able to navigate around that. Uh, but at least a 690 tells us you pay your bills and you have five years to pay it back because we understand if you can make it to that third year, you're probably going to do okay in business. So those first three years are very tenuous, so we pay attention to it. So we have uh, uh, we have attorneys on, 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 on staff, we have CPAs, we have administration, we have consultants to help them build wealth. Because this is not about making money. This is about long-term wealth, so you can leave something for the next generation. So that, that's a great program, and that's what we use for seed money. And the maximum in that program is $150 thousand dollars but that's not your harvest that gets your seed so thank god no one has called us from tahiti after they got the money that's why we make sure they have the plan the personal the financial plan and that team to hold them accountable because the more successful you become the more accountability you need that's why we become their board of directors well that, that's why so you mean tell me that uh you can come in someone has a 690 credit score they have a dream they have a vision they have a financial plan, they had a personal plan, and you mean to tell me that they can qualify for a business line of credit to go off and start a business? We do it every day, and, um, and we're very good at it. And the only thing we ask is that for the 690s to make sure that they are people of integrity. So again, when we, they have that clear vision, they have a personal financial plan. We want to know how much money do you need to make in year one, year two, year three, year four. That can't be left up to osmosis. We need a definitive number to finance and operate your life. Because then you won't co-mingle funds when money starts coming into your business. And then we provide that business plan. So a lot of cases, many people, if they're 30, 40, 50 years old, they hadn't been to school, and most likely have never written a business plan before. That's why we do it for them. And here's a real uh, selling point here for you, Prince, is that we put our fee, majority of our fee, on the back end, which means when they get the money, then they pay us. So we take away every excuse, because again, it's really not about that entrepreneur, it's about the jobs. So we're trying to get the 200, uh, I mean, uh, 20, uh, two, to 200, 20 million jobs. So we're trying to get to, but it starts with that entrepreneur. Wow, so let me get this right. So someone go in, they have good credit, they have a good idea, business plan, personal plan, they can sit down with you, get a business line of credit to start their business, and mm -hmm. they don't have to pay back the money until they start. No, they have. Is there a percentage to no. take? I mean, I mean they, uh, they don't have to pay back the money until they start to make money? How does that go? Or is it a year time? Is it a time frame? How does that go? Are you guys take equity? How, do, how does that work? 
No, no, we don't take any equity in the business. That's another big benefit of doing business with us. So, because for us, it's a big risk, right? So we don't take any equity, it's their business. What we are providing is guidance. So here's how you pay the money back. You pay the principal with no interest for the first 12 months. If you need the money beyond 12 months, then you pay principal and interest, and that's based upon uh, your credit uh, profile going into the 13th month. But again, we write the plan where you can pay that money back within 12 months. That's why we have to make sure that the business is cash flowing from the assessment. So we don't want just, just a good idea. We need a profit, a profitable idea that's going to make money. Again, this is seed money. So this $100,000, should turn into whatever the plan is, $150,000, $200,000 going to the second or third year. Now, there are some restaurants that may not be able to cash flow that quickly. Um, so we can, we've got some um, ways that we can kind of extend some of those terms because we are the underwriter. So that gives us a lot of power to help that entrepreneur in St. Louis or Detroit or New York or Los Angeles or Honolulu, wherever you are, as long as you're in the United States, we can help you get to that next level. And that's what this is all about. And that's why I wrote the book, Never Chase a Paycheck Again, to make sure people have the education and the empowerment to be successful. Never Chase a Paycheck Again. Tell us a little bit more about that book. Well, I wrote that book straight out of my spirit. You know, I've, I've been around uh, bankers and, and banking and valuation and mergers and acquisitions. I taught uh, business at Emory University here in Atlanta, Georgia for some years. I started a business academy. So I've been around entrepreneurs all of my life. And so I took these 25 years of hardships and uh, successes and failures and lessons and put it in this book. I wrote it in a fifth grade level because I know what it means. The reason I believe I'm bald-headed today, Prince, is because I've been stressed out all of my life facing paychecks. That's why I'm bald-headed. <laughs> stressed out. My hair just wow. stopped. Right? So I took all of that stress and just put it into this book in a fifth grade level so you can get it. And the reason why I wrote it so succinctly is so that not only mom and dad can get the book, but you can pass this on to your teenager and, uh, and the millennials that are in your home and in your family. So in this book, I show you... First of all, to start by understanding your God-given purpose. What were you born to do? Now, if you can get that, now let's put a business around what you were born to do. I'm telling you, that's how I define success, doing what you were born to do. And I mean very few people, because we can give you $100,000 to go start a shoe company, but if that's not in your heart, you're probably going to quit when things get tough. So that's why we say, do you have an obsession about this? Now, I know it's very popular that investment bankers want to know, what is your exit strategy? I want to know your exit strategy up front. We don't want to know your exit strategy. I want to know is, are you going, is this an obsession for you? Is this something that keeps you up at night? Is this something that maybe you would do for free? If you can answer those questions, then we know we got gold. And we know that when things get tight, and they will in business, that you're not going to quit because you're not doing it for the money you're doing it for the mission, and that's a big key. This is pretty, I, I don't know, listening to this, someone's going to say, Dr. Watkins, what, what's the catch? You mean to tell me, if I got a good business plan, if I got a good uh, business plan, I got a good personal plan, I have, you know, uh, good credit of a 690 or above, and I sit down with your company, and I sit down with you, you're going to help me get to that next level. What, what is the catch of this? Why do people fail at this? Well, again, if they go to conquerworldwide.com, C-O-N-Q-U-E-R, worldwide.com, they'll see great testimonials on there. They'll see Luberta, who was 74 years old, who came into our office and sat down crying because no one ever believed that she had a vision for a bed and breakfast. And long story short, we got her $127,000. She went through this conquer plan, those seven things that I just said, the assessment, the, the personal plan, the business plan, the teaming, the money, the marketing, the support. She went through all of that, and we gave her instructions, and we said, find this type of facility. Well, most people fail at that. Well, she did it. She came back three months later. She found the facility in Palmetto, Georgia. And we got $127,000. It was enough money as a down payment. Long story short, she opened up that bed and breakfast. Now, the first three months, no one ever came to her bed and breakfast. 
she got depressed and she called us. She said, Dr. Watson says, no one's coming. It's not working. Then we said, well, who have you been called to serve? Who's supposed to be there? And she said, pastors and their, and their first ladies. I said, why? She said, because I want people to have as much sex as possible in my bed and breakfast. Now, she's 74 <laughs> years old. She wanted sex to be happening in her bed and breakfast. And we said, you know what? Then we, and we created a marketing plan around that mission and those people who she called to serve, we, we sent out letters. Uh, long story short, she called us about a year later. She said, Dr. Watkins, my facility is filled and there's a lot of sex going on in my facility. But here's the thing. Her sons now work for her. Her grandchildren now work for her. And I wish I could show you a picture right now for your viewers and see how bright and how happy she is. She smiles from her heart, and she gets up in the morning. She makes breakfast. She knocks on the door, and she serves that breakfast, and she's doing what, what God has called her to do. But more than that, she's now leaving a, a legacy for her family and not a liability. And that's what it's all about. Wow. You know what? I want to make sure we do this before. I'm going to give away two copies of your books to the first two people that comment or email me at ask, A-S-K-P, ask, ask Prince at royalfinances.com. You can comment on my YouTube link, Instagram, Twitter, however you want to get in contact with me. The first two people who contact me, once you contact me, I'm going to ask you for your mailing address. When I get your mailing address, I'm going to send two copies of his book, Never Chase a Paycheck Again. And for the people who don't win, because everybody won't win, for the people who don't win, I'm going to drop a link in the description box to where you better check them out on Amazon. That's what we're going to do. So we want to make sure we spread this resource, because what you're saying, Dr. Watkins, a lot of people don't know what a business line of credit is. A lot of people don't know that this is a resource that's available to them. I didn't know I could secure a business line of credit. I didn't know that all I needed to do was come up with a business plan, a way to execute it, and that I can sit down with someone that will actually help me fund and pursue uh, what I'm trying to do. A lot of people just don't know that. So in order to help that with this financial literacy program, that's what we do here, we want to spread the word as much as possible as far as we can reach out. So that's what you guys got to do. Comment Dr. Watkins. You comment Dr. Watkins. The first two people to comment that are going to or send me an email to askprince at royalfinancial.com. You're going to get two copies of Never Chase a Paycheck Again from Dr. Watkins on us. So I want to make sure I put that out. So you said you was a veteran. What branch were you in? I was in the United States Army, sir. Oh, and um, right, after, right after high school, and I, was, I went to... Um, I was in the Army for several years, got out, uh, went to college, and uh, went to B school there at West Georgia University uh, here in the Atlanta, Georgia area, and um, had every intention on making it back. Didn't quite make it back in the service. I started uh, my own um, financial company and consulting company, uh, but those years in the military it made me who the man I am today. And um, every fiber of me and in operating in integrity and how I operate, how I walk, and I tell you, it changed my life as a young man. So without that training, that basic training, without that, and you know this, Prince, I probably would be a knucklehead, but I certainly wouldn't be here talking to you about helping people uh, <laughs> never chase a paycheck again, that's for sure. Definitely. I, you know, definitely I appreciate your service, and I, and I definitely just speak one-on-one about integrity because I learned that uh, big time coming out of the military at the age of 18, 19 years old, and uh, learning about integrity. I probably didn't even know what the word integrity meant when I uh, first came in, but that's something that I'm very proud of. Now, it's some more questions yeah. I want to get into when people say, that you're helping people around the world, because I think this is a great resource, uh, because I, I get a lot of emails, a lot of comments, a lot of things like that. People are looking for investors. People are looking for people to help them out. Hey, I got this great idea. Can you help me? Or would you? where can I get the capital to? Because, you know, I don't qualify for a business loan. Uh, my family doesn't have any money, or, you know, nobody believes in me, or I've never done nothing like this. Is there anybody out there that's willing to take a risk on me? And I think that what you're bringing is a great, great resource for people out there to utilize. Now, I want to ask you, on the downside, what what are some of the things that, you know, the common mistakes that you see entrepreneurs make? Well, 
number one is most people have not handled $100,000 all at one time before. So a lot of times if you're in debt or you owe child support or you're, you're back on some sort of, sometimes what you're trying to, you know, you're trying to right some wrongs. And it takes a lot of discipline in the beginning. And so um, I don't mind if you get $100,000, perhaps, you know, take, you know, three or $4,000 and go on vacation for a few days uh, after you meet certain milestones. I think, you know, I think that's great. Uh, but another thing is, is not holding themselves accountable, thinking that they know everything. And, uh, and so that's why we become their board for the first year. And once a quarter, we want them to come in, regardless of where they live, come in and talk to us. Um, because even though you, you may be cash flowing positively now, you, the more you uh, make, the more Uncle Sam was going to take, right? So you want to make sure that you understand taxes. You want to uh, make sure you understand structure, management. If you hire the wrong person, and we've seen this before, you hire the wrong person, again, you're going to be bullied like me from being stressed out. And so you want to make sure that you have a strong uh, team, uh, not just below you working for you, you, but above you, uh, people who've been there before. So hiring the wrong people, uh, mismanagement of money, um, and mismanagement of your own personal time. Most people, when they get up in the morning, they don't know what to do. What should I do? Um, who should I call? You know, just getting a fancy office and coming in and not knowing and not having a plan throughout your whole day. We like to plan every minute. Right, and I and not only do we like to plan every minute, but how much money do you need to make per hour, per minute? We don't we don't leave that to osmosis. We calculate that. So if you don't have, uh, don't know what to do uh, every day with your life, if you are mismanaging your money, if you hire the wrong people, those are major mistakes that will lead you back to chasing paychecks again. Now, when you say hire the wrong people, at what point do you realize like? I think I missed them. Well, who would have oh, you'll know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> me, oh, what are some ways that you can prevent? What are some ways you can prevent hiring the wrong people? Well, we're going through that right now. One of our clients, her name is Doris, is actually uh, right here in Georgia as well. Uh, she owns a personal um, home care business, and um, we were able to finance her, and she grew, and she, she hired an administrative assistant, right? And the person came in, and she was very sharp. And um, unfortunately, she told some lies on her resume. And, but we'll have to go back and look at Doris. Okay, because she was trusting. And so the, here's the formula I always give CEOs to make sure they hire the right people. We trust, but verify. We trust, but we verify. <laughs> trust, but verify. Just because you say you went to school and you got an associate's degree, look, we're going to verify that. Just because you say you have increased someone else's business by 35%, we're going to verify that. We're going to verify everything. And uh, you need to do that. So this cannot be an emotional decision because the person is depending upon you. This has to be a very practical, prayerful decision that goes through at least three layers before we say yes. So that's very key. So just because someone looks great in the, in a suit doesn't mean that uh, they're going to be a great fit for you. That's great, great, uh, great resource. Now, is there anything that you look for uh, that you like in a particular entrepreneur? And on the flip side to that, is there something that's a red flag to an entrepreneur that you say, hey, this is a characteristic of my 20 years that I've seen that kind of leads you into a wrong direction. Because I'm going to ask this for myself. I want to make sure I avoid these things. Sure. Or, you know, make well, sure I, I remember. marry mm -hmm. a good one. Well, I, I married, uh, I mean, I, um, I raised a lot of money back in 2007, about a million to for a large real estate uh, development in Jacksonville, Florida. And this was before the recession hit, and we had a $15 million uh, line of credit uh, to build these estate homes. Long story short, uh, the recession hit. We didn't close. We lost the money. It was gone. I was depressed for two and a half months. I stayed in the bed. I couldn't get out of bed. I was that depressed. So uh, there was no funny business. No one could sue. There was no lawsuits. Everybody understood it was beyond our control. And so what I've learned in that situation was is that make sure that this is something that was not just a good idea. It was something that was in our heart. We needed to do our due diligence. So 
I like entrepreneurs who've experienced failures. It's like I like getting on the plane with a veteran who's been shot down. He landed that plane safely. I'll, I'll get on that plane with that guy all day long. <laughs> I like entrepreneurs that's been through something and they failed at it, that they, they failed miserably. They put all their money into something and it failed. I like those guys. I don't mind those guys having bankruptcies and, and I don't mind those guys having foreclosures. I don't mind those guys because they took a risk. And if you have the nerve to come back after that, then, man, I can ride with that guy all day long. So just because someone out there has uh, had failure in their life and maybe their, their relationships got broken as a result of this, and we see a lot of that with entrepreneurs, they come broken. And I'm saying, pick it up again. We can do it again. Let's get back in the plane and let's go uh, accomplish this war together. And this time, you're smarter, you're wiser, you know what not to do. And so now I'll trust that guy with $100,000 before I trust someone else who's never done it before. So if that's you out there and you fail a few times, I say come see us and definitely get the book, Never Chase a Paycheck Again. Okay. So now one of the things I want to do is for people out there who are like, wow, this is a great resource. I want to get in contact with Dr. Watkins. How can they do that? Absolutely. Um, our website, first of all, is Conquer Worldwide again, C O N Q U E R Worldwide dot com. You'll see the books there. You'll see our consulting companies. You'll see the team that uh, that work with me faithfully every day, and they get it done. Um, on uh, social media, uh, Instagram, Robert J. Watkins. On uh, YouTube, uh, videos. I have teaching videos out there. Robert J. Watkins on Facebook, Doctor Robert J. Watkins, D R Robert J. Watkins, as well as Twitter. Robert J. Watkins, and uh, we're very engaging out there in social media. I know you're out there, Prince, and uh, you post some great <laughs> stuff. Um, I follow you on, on everywhere you go. I'm following you now. But people can get in touch with us, or they can give us a call at 888-526-1118, 888-526-1118, and we'd love to uh, interact with them, absolutely. Okay, so we got Dr. Watkins. He's here on the line. He's giving you guys the contact information. I think this is a great resource out there for everybody out there that's in the podcast land, YouTube land, catching us live in Hawaii, that'll catch the playback on social media, <laughs> that'll catch the playback local here in Denver. You guys are hearing a, a, a local resource that you guys can, not a local resource here, but you're hearing from a local person, a resource that you guys can utilize because I know a lot of people out there write me and ask me and say, hey, Prince, um, I need some help with this. How can I get some help? You know, uh, I'm trying to raise funds or, you know, I'm looking for some guidance, and I think it's a great resource. So, Dr. Walker, is there anything else out there that you want to leave the audience with that are listening? Well, I just want to say you're not by yourself. While we also do big conferences, and I'm a conference speaker, but we're global in our mission, but our day-to-day -day mission is one-on-one. -on -one. And so you're unique, your vision is unique, your family is unique, your plan is unique, and so we want to walk with you. So if you're connected to Prince, we want to be connected to you, and we want this you to have the next great testimony. You know, there's a lot of things out there, Prince. There's Shark Tank. There's a lot of people talking uh -huh. about money and entrepreneurship on radio. But the difference is with this is that we're not assuming anything. And so we can bring those resources to them to make sure that they prosper and prosper well. And Dr. Walker, before you get out of here, I wanted to ask you that question. You just brought us some competition. What gives you the competitive advantage? Of course, I want to say, hey, well, let me go to Shark Tank or let me go to the bank or this other place. <laughs> what is the competitive advantage? Why should I call Dr. Watkins? That's a great question. You know, when you talk to Damon or Mr. Wonderful on Shark Tank, the first question they ask is, well, how many units have you sold? You know, how many clients do you have? You know, what does your, your balance sheet look like? The clients we deal with, they're like, I haven't sold anything. All I have is a dream. All I have is a vision. And, you know, a dream without resources is a nightmare. And if they, if they made any financial mistakes in their life, you become invisible in this economy. If you have a bad credit score or if you make mistakes, you know, they just, the world just kind of throws you away. We're saying, no, you are valuable. We can raise your credit score. We can get you in the money. I'm saying you can do this again. So we kind of step below 
where the banks doesn't want to deal with you because banks only give money to people who have money. Shark Tank only want to help people who already have a measure of success. So if you haven't done this before, I'm saying that is the, gives us the competitive advantage because we believe there are more startups. The next best thing is someone who's watching this program, but you can't do it by yourself. So if you don't have any manifestation, if you don't have any results, we're saying we understand. And nobody wants to deal with that person, but we do. We made a career out of it. Very cool points he said there. When he said about Shark Tank, well, who people who've been following me two years ago, Dr. Watkins, I was a uh, finalist for Shark Tank two years ago. I know, so, I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was a finalist for, uh, two well, years ago, so, so he's telling the truth. That was a great experience, huh? Was, but yeah, they want to know, you know, what, give me, give me something to hang my hat on. And I understand that. And, and we like that, too. We don't get those kind of calls a lot of times. Now, we can help the established entrepreneur. We've got resources. We have some equity for those people as well. But the startup, the next best thing, that's what American Idol is looking for. That's what Shark Tank is looking for. Uh, you know, that's what you see all these little Shark Tank, um, you know, seminars going on now where people are pitching. Well, we've been doing that for a long time. I was teaching how to make a pitch at your university, you know, 15 years ago. So, but we understand that if you don't know how to communicate, like I didn't know how to communicate, I didn't know what a pitch was, I've seen literally millions of dollars transfer because someone had seven slides that was clear. The value proposition wow. was clear. The marketing proposition was clear. Everything was clear, and then the funding and the financing was clear. And I've seen millions of dollars raised just on seven sheets of paper. And so we know how to do wow. this. But we know a frustration can be having an idea without the resources or the team is going to get very, very difficult for you. Got it. Well, guys, that is Dr. Watkins. I'm the Prince of Investment, Prince Dykes, here, coming to you guys from Denver, Colorado, and Honolulu, Hawaii. Thank you guys for tuning in to the next video podcast, cartoon, or whatever you see me do crazy around the globe. Peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.